back in October when I put my Shadow Play setup and settings to tour, a user's comments simply vanished into thin air, made a really good point about not using SSDs for your Shadow Play 10 files. The reason? Well, these files are going to be writing to disk every second you game because of background recording, which, believe it or not, does put a lot of strain on your drive and will have the potential to lower your SSD's lifespan. Alternatively, in some instances, a hard drive speed just isn't fast enough. First of all problems, right? Well, the solution for things like this is simple. Use a RAM disk. Now, RAM disk, as the name suggests, is the idea of using a portion of your RAM to get a virtual disk that runs faster than fucking Usain Bolt. Setup is easy as probably there's a few things you should know beforehand. Well, great, you're probably thinking, that sounds awesome, but there are a few downsides to it. Here are a few. Firstly, since it does use physical RAM, or the RAM you have installed, you are limited to the amount of RAM you have within your system. So there is little chance they'll be creating a RAM disk anywhere near the size of an SSD or a hard drive can offer. The next that price per gigabyte is terrible, or at least really, really huge, compared to that of an SSD and even more so that of a hard drive. Another one is that RAM is volatile, so unless you specifically export it before you shut down, shut down or loss of power to your computer cause the drive to be wiped and all the data is going to be gone. You do have the option to export these to disk, but again that adds several minutes to start up and shut down times. And lastly, you might want Battlefield 4 to load in one second, but it's completely impractical to install games and programs onto this thing because of how expensive it is per gigabyte and the fact you still have to offload these files upon startup and shutdown. But here's the thing, I've been using RAM disks for over two years, using the software that I'm going to recommend in a minute, and here's why you should use it. It massively increases the PC's performance where applications and Windows would have to use temporary data from your disk. The disk being your primary drive, so where Windows is installed on. I mean, have a look at these figures. Granted, some of my write speeds are still pretty low, but my read and write speeds for my HDD, which is my hard drive of course, was about 180 megabytes per second read and 170 write, compared to that of an SSD, my 850 EVO by the way, which shows 540 megabytes per second read and 520 write, and now as for the RAM disk, as expected, it runs circles around the SSD, with read speeds about 7,400 megabytes per second and write speeds of about 7,600 megabytes per second. Damn, that's about 13.44 times faster read and about 14.75 times faster write speeds. Not only that, but the main reason we're going to be using this is because it can reduce wear and tear of your disk you'd otherwise be recording to. To put this into perspective, SSDs and hard drives will eventually die. Of course, SSDs will be longer because there's no moving parts, whereas with RAM, it massively reduces the wear and tear because there are fewer read and write cycles, which is especially important on maintaining the life of your SSD. There's also a lot less noise and heat produced and less junk on the disk because while well, all the temp files are deleted upon turning off your computer, preventing the buildup of clutter. Anyway, as for the extra tutorial, <laughs> Gamefly.com has over 8,000 new releases and classics available to rent for the Xbox One, PS4, and a bunch of other systems. As a Gamefly member, you can rent even the newest release such as Doom and upcoming titles such as BF1, Titanfall 2, and Infinite Warfare for a low monthly fee. If you like a game so much you don't want to send it back, you can keep it for a low use price, and there are never due dates or late fees. Gamefly is great for playing single player driven games as you can just rent them for a fraction of the price and then just return them. Sign up for a premium free 30 day trial using my affiliate link down in the description below. The one I'll be using is Soft Perfect RAM Disk, and this is for Windows, but I will be using it because it's stupidly simple to use, lightweight when you're running it, and has all the options we could possibly want. If you do want the program to automatically transfer your temp files to the RAM disk and export slash offload them upon exit and startup at least, then look into using a different tool. For that good one to note one specific to your motherboard, such as Asus ROG and MSI. In this tutorial, I will be still showing you how to offload your files upon startup and shutdown but other softwares do handle 10 files a little bit better. To start by going to the SoftPerfect website, link in the description, scroll down to the bottom and press the install button. And finally, when it's finished downloading, install it and restart your computer. Upon opening the software, you have the option to import and export to disk, add a boot drive, mount and unmount drives, create disks and a lot more stuff. So go to tool settings and make sure that it launched automatically when Windows is checked. This is really, really important. And then things with like no privilege users to modify settings is also checked. This is so that it doesn't require specific admin privileges to manipulate settings every single time. Now allow users to eject the RAM disk in Explorer basically means it acts like a CD disk or a USB drive, so you have the option to disconnect it. This doesn't really matter, but just have it checked anyway. Global drive letters from RAM volumes and show icons in the system tray should also be checked for obvious reasons. After that, just click OK.
Now to add a ram deer, simply click the huge plus green icon and another pop-up will appear. Under disk information, start by entering on the size you want the ram disk to be. This isn't megabytes by the way, so to convert gigabytes into megabytes, in this case at least, just times it by a thousand. So for example, if you want a one gigabyte ram disk, it will be a thousand megabytes, but you just have to be mindful of how much ram you have installed and what you're going to be using it for. If you're using an eight gigabyte kit and you want to be able to play games and do other stuff, then I'd say don't make it any larger than two gigabytes. Most people running things like 16 gigabytes and up, do what you want. I mean, think of it this way. The value that you put in is how much less you're going to have available for everything else. Pair that with the fact that Windows, the 64-bit version at least, uses 2 gigabytes already. And you can see how setting this value too high will leave you without available RAM to use for other programs and games. This is a really big important point, guys. Don't overlook this. And since for me, the sole purpose of this is to use a Shadowplay 10 files, and I normally have a 2-minute recording buffer, Shadowplay says it will be about 750 megabytes. So to be safe, I'm going to make my RAM disk 1 gigabyte of my 16 gigabytes I have installed, soon to be 32. If you don't know how much RAM you have installed, it's probably going to be in the control panel, or just have a look at the specifications that you got from your retailer. Now, image file name, don't bother with this. And amount of options, you can choose the drive letter for how it appears in Windows, and for me, I chose to do R for RAM, genius, I know, and mount is removable if you want the ability to eject it. I would say that you should leave this unchecked so that you don't accidentally get rid of it, and for most of you, I would ignore hard disk emulation, and that's because it treats it more like a regular hard drive in Windows. I wonder if you could actually piece one and two together to figure that out. It's really obvious. But what I mean by that is upon startup and shutdown, it will load and offload all the data from your primary drive to your RAM disk. This is great in that you can still keep all of your data on the drive with incredible speeds of the RAM disk without having the problem of it getting wiped. But for our purposes, we don't need it. And just so you know, it does add a substantial amount of time onto boot and shutdown sequences, depending on the RAM disk and how much data you're offloading to it. Now for file system options, for file system, just set that to NDFS, which is what all of your other drives in Windows use, and also has no size limits. For our use, especially in Windows, it's one of the best, and in terms of creating folders, I don't really bother since it is just a RAM disk for one purpose, for me at least. But if you did want to, simply put in the name of the folder onto each separate line, like so. Next, go into Advanced and leave everything at standard besides one thing, and that's Volume Label. This will allow you to change the name of your drive within Explorer, I'm just going to set mine as either RAM disk or Shadowplay temp, whatever. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. And after that, just click OK. Quick note, if you try to change the name of it within File Explorer itself, it would reset the name every time to local disk. So just make sure if you want to do that, you want to change the name of it, you want to actually do it through this. After that, just click OK, and that's it. This is probably going to be a bit more redundant, but I am going to show you how to put your RAM drive in GeForce Experience and use it for your temp files. So start by loading GeForce Experience and go into the settings bit and then the shadow play bit. After that, you have the option to set your shadow play temp file. Set this as a RAM disk and you're good to go. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more tips like this. If you've got a buddy who's also looking how to do this, then why not send him my way? Now I was going to be doing a review of the laptop and a Black Widow Chroma soon, but I'm under extreme time pressure at the moment, so hopefully you can excuse me for that. Thanks everyone and until next week, adios! Looking for geek and gaming collectibles? Well then Loot Crate has you covered. Now Loot Crate is essentially Comic Con in a box. Every month there's new goodies from collectibles to apparel to tech gadgets and other epic gear. Save 10% on any new subscription at trylootcrate.com forward slash proto and enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Check out the link in the video description to learn more.